Now it's my privilege to share the Word of God with you. Today, I have something burning in my heart that I want to share with you. I've been wanting to do this actually, uh, but I have so much in my heart that, that I cannot do it within one session. So today I'm going to share uh, the first part of what is a, a three-part sharing, a three-part series that, that I want to call it just Corona Update, all right? Just a Corona Update, part one, two, and three. And today will be part one. Uh, I've been following up very closely on our believers, on our, in, you know, on our partners, co-laborers around the world, from the west to the east, and um, I've also been in. Uh, have the, I also had have had the privilege to be in in fellowship with very prayerful brethren who are prophetic people, who are intercessors, who truly hear God and and. And I've had the privilege to know them, fellowship with them, pray with them, to hear from God together with them. And uh, we hooked up over the, the internet, over Zoom, over different uh, platforms, to fellowship, to exchange notes. And, I, and I've been so edified, so enriched by, by their friendship and by their sharing. And uh, so I have a lot of thoughts on, on this situation that we are all facing right now regarding the coronavirus uh, epidemic, which is now actually already a pandemic. All right. And... And I just want to update the family, update the family on a, a number of issues. All right, so today will just only be part one. So stay with us. Over the next few weeks, I will share a uh, uh, minimum three parts to this, all right, to this uh, update. Okay, so are you ready? Actually, I want you to pray with me again before I begin. So would you close your eyes all over the world? You know, close your eyes with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we... We look to you, especially for such a time as this, when the world is shrouded in darkness and even gross darkness, like that which is described in Isaiah chapter 60. All the more, Lord, we want to look to you. We want to fix our gaze upon you, Lord Jesus, and draw wisdom from you and to see the light in your word that would give us instruction. Because, Lord, your scripture says that your word, what you're saying to us, it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. In the midst of darkness, we fear not because your word will guide us like a lamp to our feet. It will shine upon our path that we will not even strike against a stone because your word is our divine counsel. And right now, at this moment, we ask, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you will speak to your beloved children right now. And, and over the limitation of such a platform when, when certain things cannot be, be explained in its details for expediency, Lord, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you will reveal the light and revelation to brethren around the world who are listening in right now. That you will let them know what you are saying to them and that you may equip each one of us not only to be able to survive in this moment, but to thrive by your Holy Spirit and by your counsel and to be able, Lord, to be guided by you to flourish in your, in your plans and purposes for our lives, that we may be used of you, Lord, for your glory, to lead the world to know you. Thank you, Father. Bless this time that we have. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we agree and pray. And every one of you out there say, Amen. 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 Well, brethren, we're really living right now in very, very unprecedented time. All right. Uh, these really are the days of uncertainty. Uncertainty. We have new updates every day of how we're going to embrace more changes, more changes every day, even from our government, you know, in, in, in uh, reacting to the development of the situation. But you know what? One thing we can be sure, though, is that God is still sitting on the throne. He is still in control. And His Word is not quarantined. I mean, His gospel is still being preached all over the world. And the Spirit of God right now, I tell you, He's actively at work. Yes, He's at work to bring to pass His divine plans and purposes. And He wants us, He wants us to have, to have His perspectives so that we may partner with Him to accomplish His will. Amen? 
Amen. God's word actually has already forewarned us that there will be such a time as this of glo- such a global shaking in the last days before the return of our Lord Jesus uh, to take his bride, the church. And here we are. It has begun. The time of shaking has begun. I want to read to you this uh, base scripture before we go on. This is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. At, this, at that time, his voice shook the earth. But now, he has promised. Once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Now, I know I've been quoting this scripture much in in recent times, but really this is the cry of the Spirit in this hour to the body of Christ. And the word clearly tells us that in all this shaking, actually something glorious is happening. God is causing everything that is not of Him even though they may appear to be of Him, including churches and ministries, everything that's not of Him will be shaken, will be taken down, that what is of Him may remain standing. And what will remain standing is His kingdom, which He says in this moment of shaking, He's handing over to His children. And you, you are His children, aren't you? And so this is a time of rejoicing, actually. God said, if we, if we know that this is a time that He's handing the kingdom to us, we will be thankful. So we are not facing the situation now with fear. We are thankful when we understand what, what is going on from God's perspective. That's why I want to call this part one a kingdom perspective to this whole coronavirus uh, pandemic situation. All right. We want to know God's perspective that we may be thankful and that we may worship God. It says here that we may worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. And another version is, is translated as that we may serve God acceptably with uh, reverence and awe. That we may serve God. That, that means it's only when you understand what is His kingdom agenda that He's actually implementing right now, He's bringing to pass right now, not only you will not be fearful, not only you will not be shaken and be brought down, you will be receiving His kingdom, you will be thankful, and you can serve Him accurately because you are of the same mind with His kingdom plans. Amen? And so this series is, uh, is taught with that purpose in mind to help you be aligned with God's kingdom plan and agenda in this hour. And we really need to understand the situation from His perspective, that we may flow with Him, that we may accomplish His purpose. And the scripture also clearly tells us that as part of this worldwide shaking, it will involve plagues. Luke chapter 21, verse 10 And verse 11 says, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes, and in various places, plagues and famines, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. It will be a fearful time. There will be plagues involved. And you know what? There will be more and more. And, 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 And my sense is that this is not the last plague. Epidemic speaking, all right. Epidemically speaking, or this will not be the last. In fact, they, there's very likely to be even deadlier strains ahead, all right. If God's word were to come to pass, but you know what? We are not to be fearful. Yes, the scripture does say there'll be a lot of terror, but as as God's people, we need to know that God has a glorious plan in the midst of all this darkness. Right now, as it is right now, many people, including Christians, are really fearful because they have fed primarily on what the world's media is is churning out for their audience. And if they are only feeding on that, I tell you, they will be fearful. I I need to warn you all this. as I want to speak to especially my dear brothers and sisters about something. You all do know that with the arrival of the internet, 
that has made available many other alternative media platforms for our entertainment and for news and so forth. And that's why many people are no longer following their traditional um, media platforms. You know, and you know what that means? That means that many traditional TV news channels and, and, and newspapers, they have been seeing their viewership, their readership plummet. They've been plunging to new lows, if you're aware of what is happening in the marketplace, in the media world. I'm sure the people, our, our brethren in the, uh, whoever is listening in right now who is in the media and uh, uh, industry, you know there has been a tectonic shift of viewership and readership away from the traditional platforms onto all the other alternatives in the internet, on the YouTube, on the, even Facebook and, and, and all of that. And you know what? You know what that means? That means the loss of a lot of advertisement dollar for the traditional media companies. And their, business, their businesses has been, have been failing. That is a fact. And, and to stem this hemorrhage, this loss of income massively, you know what? A lot of media companies are really resorting to, to anything, actually, to prime up their, their, their viewership. Anything that can include sensationalism and all that. But I tell you one classic, one classic uh, 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 method they would use to attract greater audience. Uh, you know, what is that? Bad news. They will churn out a lot of bad news. In fact, they will couple that with sensationalism. So it's sensational, sensationalized bad news for a double whammy of of attraction. I call attraction because bad news sells better than good news. Do you know that? Studies have shown that bad news sells better than, than good news by a whopping ratio of like 9 to 1. It's 9 times, you can attract 9 times as many viewership when you sell, when you, when you, when you uh, uh, purvey uh, bad news rather than good news. And so as a whole right now, there's a constant stream of bad news. Constant stream. There, there's no lack of bad news. And bad news that are often sensationalized and exaggerated for attracting new people, for attracting hits and eyeballs on the internet even. So, so what will happen is this, when you constantly feed on bad news, it will inevitably create fear and even panic in your heart. And I just really feel compelled to say this today, all right, to, especially to our brethren. You know, do not be given over to fear and panic. You need to change what you're feeding on. If you're only feeding on the news that the world is giving you, you, you will be in trouble. And also, I have a special warning going out to our brethren right now. I told you this is an update. This is actually a pastoral update, all right, to, for, the, for the sheep. I have a special warning. Be careful. Beware of lies and deception in the media, all right, especially some very sensationalized kind of a, a, a news outlet in the world internationally. Hmm. Um, what I can say over this platform right now is this. There's a lot of manipulation, a lot of false news and fake news even. Manipulation by, by, by various forces to advance their political agenda, their propaganda, e even, their, even to, to advance very satanic causes and agenda. Do you know that? All right? That's all I can say for now, all right, over, over such a, a platform. I, because when you are in the prophetic environment, when you're hearing from God, when you're in, in relationship and communication with godly people who hear God, when you're praying together and interceding, you will have downloads from God that show you the real situation. And you know what? You'll be stunned by how much lies there are out there right now, even over the news and the headlines and all that to advance their political causes and, and, and agendas. So I just want to put it out there. Don't be sucked in. Because I've seen brethren even, you know, uh, forwarding, forwarding all kinds of propaganda that they, they, they truly believe though, you know, and they thought by doing that they can 
warn people. I tell you what, it, what is best. God's word is the best. Amen? Really, really listen to God. You know, spend time in His word. Spend time in His word. Many of you out there right now, I'm speaking prophetically, you, you really need to decouple from the fake news and, and, the, and the false news and, and feed on good news. Amen? You need to feed on the good news because it is when we feed on the word of God that we will, we will get sensitized to the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us. And that is when we, we will begin to receive supernatural knowledge, heavenly revelation, showing us the truth of what is really happening out there in the world right now. And that is God's perspective. And only when we have God's per perspective that we, we can discern His will, we can identify what God is doing around the world right now. And more importantly, we can find our unique place in God's kingdom right now and to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit to enforce God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what we want to do. Amen? Yeah, we want to know what He's doing and, uh, and we want to co-labor with Him. And we, so so don't, don't, be, don't be deceived by the news out there. Really, believe me. Yeah, there are many more layers to what news tells you. The, the, the real things behind oftentimes are really not what, what they, make, they want to make you believe in. All right? So I want to encourage us to go to the real source of, of news. It's called the good news. It's the Word of God. Hallelujah. Get into the Word like never before. All right? This is the first major piece of pastoral advice I want to give you t today from this address. Get into the Word of God like never before, ne like never before. And only then will you begin to have a, a, a truthful understanding of what is happening, an accurate perspective with a, with a heavenly angle and clarity. And, and believers like that will be very useful to God in this hour to be able to, to extend His kingdom agenda in the midst of all this shaking. You saw just now in the scripture that in all this shaking, God is causing his kingdom to arise. Be part of that kingdom camp. Amen? Be part of that kingdom camp right now. All right? So, so if you are in the word of God, you will not be given over to fear. I have met even believers who are so fearful, for example, over this coronavirus situation. They're really fearful. Some are so stressed, so stressed out over this and, and, and so fearful. Like, they... they, they they actually believe like this is going to kill half the world, at least half the world. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm not trying to play down the severity of the situation. But we need to have the right perspective. We need to have a balanced perspective. And, and right now, I'm going to show us some, some statistics, all right? Because I want you to have a more balanced perspective of what is really happening. So I'm going to show you some statistics that reveal what are some of the True killers, global killers, greater killers than coronavirus that we actually seriously should be concerned about. But somehow we have gotten used to. All right? I call them global killers. Global killers. The real killers. All right? We'll begin first with the statistic right now for the current coronavirus. All right? This is the, supposed to be today's latest uh, statistics. I just pulled together. Now, Right now, we'll look at the statistics right now, all right? Thus far, infected slightly over a million, right? Death right now, about 53,000. This is about, this worked out to be about 5.2% mortality rate for those who, who got this disease, okay? That would work out to be a, a daily death rate right now of about 566. Now, I'm calculating that based on uh, uh, 94 days from December 31st, 2019, when the first case was diagnosed in Wuhan, China. Calculating from that, about two, it's about 94 days now to today. The average death rate so far is about 566. All right? This is what we're panicking over. And the whole world right now is being brought to its knees right now. All right, supply chains have been decimated and broken. Economy has been stopped. And then stock market is plummeting. No, no. Wait, wait, hold there, hold there. Let's look at some current statistics of other realities. 
other killers, all right? I want to bring you straight to abortion. Look at these numbers with me. 56 million babies are killed through abortion every year worldwide. That works out to be 153,424 babies every day that are willfully killed, murdered, What do you think God is feeling over this? Do you think He's grieved? Every day, by willful killing, the world, and yet the world is okay with that reality. And, and the sad part is this, what is really even sadder is even the church, largely, is okay with it. Well, at least the majority of, of, of Christians and churches, because we've been desensitized to it. We've been conditioned to believe that, oh, it's just part of life. It's not okay. God's heart breaks over this. And so I, I, I want to bring a, a, a different perspective to the way we see the coronavirus. I really believe that God is allowing this to happen in this hour to jump to jolt the church, to wake up the church, to look at how much the world has fallen under our watch. And now we're sitting up, oh, panicking over the coronavirus, when all along murdering has been taking place in front of our very eyes, under our very noses, to such a tune of 150, over 1,000 babies every day. I actually put together a, 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 a chart for us to look at some of the, of the other death rates. Just for comparison, we just saw abortion, 153,000 over every day, right? Now, another great killer, food-related death, 140,822 every day, every year it kills about 51.4 million. What a food-related death. That caused by diet, by food-related issue of diet, dietary practices that bring about obesity, bring about diabetes, such and diabetes-related infirmities and sicknesses. Already is killing 50 over million every year. You think God is grieved about that? What about this? Do you know that? Four million people, about four million people die every year of violence. Violence, I mean, it includes accidents, wars, suicides, terror attacks, and so forth. Four million. And that works out to be about 11,000 every 24 hours. It is happening right now. All right, so, so let's look at the situation we have a different perspective today. That's why I call today's session a kingdom perspective. It's a reality check, all right? Do you know that the influenza, we, in short, we call the flu, is killing roughly about 470,000 yearly. And that works out to be 1,288 every day, every day. And there are actually a lot of other numbers. I just chose this few to compare them with Coronavirus, 566 at the moment. Well, it's likely to go up, but still, I don't think it will hit the race like all the others that are already taking place every day. How many will it kill in the whole year? It's uncertain at the moment. But I hope that this will give us some perspectives to allay some inordinate fears. And, and what I want to sound out is this. What I want to sound out is this. All right, that fear of the coronavirus is much more dangerous than the virus itself. Now, I want to sound it out because there's a, a, there's a devilish plan in this, you see, because the devil operates by fear. And it's not just about the, the virus, it's the fear that it can perpetuate. And that's what he uses to destroy lives right now at this instance even as we are here. And the devil often uses fear 
Fear is one of his favorite tools to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Fear is currently wrecking stock markets. Do you know that it's terminating supply chains around the world right now? Fear right now has already begun to bankrupt thousands and thousands of businesses. Thousands. Fear has, is now destroying countless lives. And I, I, just want, I want to expose this, that the devil is using the fear factor itself right now to great effect in destroying destroying many, many, many lives. And I don't want you as a beloved people of God to be given over to the devil's trick, which is fear. Fear drives people right now to rush to the supermarket. Just yesterday, <laughs> some news been going around. I, I was surprised. I passed the, the supermarket near my place and I saw, I saw hordes of people outside wanting to, to, to organize into lines to get into to buy stuff, and I know there must be something going around already, you know. And then I receive all kinds of, of, of information, messages, and well-meaning people telling me things, all the things that, 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 that's going to happen. So fear drives people to rush to the supermarkets, form long lines in panic buying, and then when necessary, fight for toilet rolls. <laughs> Okay, that one I still don't understand until now. All right, I have said this many times. It, it, it. Well, and now many countries, many countries right now have already implemented or are implementing lockdowns of various degrees, right? We know national borders, schools, churches, businesses, venues of entertainment have been or are shutting down right now. Countless people are quarantined involuntarily. Others they go on self-imposed isolation. Many are forced to work from home whether they want or not. They have no choice, many of them. Social life has been curtailed for many people as socializing is displaced by social distancing. You know what, people? Our Prime Minister of Singapore all right. Our Prime Minister, in one of his earlier national address, has rightly warned, actually, that the fear of the virus is far more damaging and dangerous than the virus itself. And I agree, and I want to sound that out to, to God's people today too. Yeah, don't let the devil harm you through fear. Don't, don't. The scripture says in the book of Job that that, that which Job feared, came upon him. It was his fear of that certain thing that opened the door for that certain thing to come into his life. Think about that. It can be diseases. It can be coronavirus in itself. It can be financial calamities that you're fearing. Various things. Don't fear. In God's house, there is no fear because the Bible says His perfect love drives away all fear. Amen? Amen? Drives away all fear. And right now, at this moment, at this moment, many people are in fear. That's why I want to advise believers not to be given over to fear or you are playing to the hand of the enemy. But, but I want to encourage you to learn to rest in the supernatural peace of God. It's a peace that the world cannot give. That's why Jesus said, let your heart not be troubled. Do not be afraid. I'll give you the, the peace that the world cannot give you. Well, receive it now in Jesus' name. Peace. I speak to the storm in anyone's heart right now that you may have be full of the storm of fear and stress. I speak Christ's supernatural peace and I declare in His words, peace be still to those storms in Jesus' name. Receive the peace of God into your heart, into your household, into your family in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, Fear is destroying many lives. I just read reports, received information that, that in the, just in the recent weeks, even as U.S. Uh, went into the lockdown, the quarantine itself already have destroyed many marriages. I was so surprised to read about that. Many people, who, when they are, they are made to be together in the house, realize they don't really like each other. You know, and they started to fight. And they actually divorce rate actually shot up. Or, and not only that, this is sad. I just read about a, 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 a suburb 
the suicide rate due to depression caused by quarantine and isolation, suicide rate shot up to be in the, just over the last like a week plus is already equals the number of the last two years of suicide rate in that town. Wow, when I read that, I was grieved because this is a devil. The devil is destroying lives right now. So the people of God, I, I want you to know to arise in this moment. Amen? To arise, to know that to know that the devil is the one using this crisis to do much evil, much evil. So what is your role and my role right now? We are to, we are, when, to begin with, we are not to be given over to the enemy's lies. All right? And secondly, I'm exhorting us today, people of God, to get into the Word, to get into peace, and, and, and to let the Word of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit displace and to flush out all the lies in the world right now, including agendas, propagandas of the enemy, all right? Fake news, false news, ah, you know. Spend time in the presence of God because this is a glorious hour that is wanting to hand the kingdom to you. But He will need, yes, God will need your cooperation, your willingness to be able to, to, be, to, to come into His presence and say, God, use me for such a time as this. Use me. Well, the world is hurting and the devil is having a, 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 his, his few day right now, wrecking up lives. Father, use me for salvation. Use me for deliverance. Use me for healing. Use me for restoration. And you know what? God's going to use you. God is going to use you. Amen? And in a moment's time, I want to join, join my faith with you to believe God for this. Because now, I tell you, brethren, this is the time for war. This is the time for war. The war for souls. Many people... Man, actually, many people, I've, I've heard this many times over the different media platform, from politicians to newscasters who are saying that this pandemic is the biggest crisis since World War II. I'm sure many of you have heard that expression. Well, actually, it is. Actually, this pandemic is comparable to a world war. By its sheer scale and scope of destruction worldwide and the way it's, it is destroying life, really is comparable to a world war. In fact, President Trump of the United States has described himself to be playing the role of a wartime president right now. And in, in, in many ways, he's right. It is war because so many human lives are at stake right now. And the Bible does say that there are seasons, there are, there's a time for different things. All right? Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 8 says, there's a time for war and a time for peace. And my beloved brothers and sisters, the time for war has dawned upon us. And I want to sound the clarion call for the people of God to arise. This is the moment we need to stand up and be counted for the kingdom. To stand up and fight. Not, not for money though, not for fame, not for power, but for souls, for precious souls for whom Jesus died to redeem. This is, how, this is the, uh, the hour to, to rise up, to stand up and be counted for God's kingdom cause. Amen? Would you agree? Amen? It's time that we as believers of Christ right now really need to wake up to the reality that this is a war, a spiritual war of global proportion. And you know what? We, we will never go back to the same old, same old again. I know the mentality of many Christians and even churches right now, they're just like, oh, this is so inconvenient. All right, we're just coping. We're just coping. We're just, just keeping our fingers crossed. We're just hoping this will just blow over and we go back to the same old, same old. No, nope. we will not go back to the same old, same old. No, nope. not after this pandemic. Because even if this blow over, and it will blow over in one way or another, there will be a next wave, then there will be another wave, another wave, and then there will be financial plague, there will be environmental plague. Waves after waves will come, all right? And that's why this is a moment God said, walk with me closely, because I'm going to protect you, and I'm going to use you to shine like, like, like never before in the history of the Church of Jesus Christ. Do you believe? I really believe we have stepped into that hour 
And this is the time to stand up. It is the time that we as, as a people of God take on the mentality of a soldier. Doesn't the scripture say that one of the role that we play is that of a soldier? I read to you from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. There's hardship involved. All of us men in Singapore who have been to the army, we know, right? That there is hardship when we enter the army. And it goes on to say, no one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. This, this is a mindset now. All right. Do, when you're a soldier, you put aside civilian affairs. What it means is that you need to focus on the urgent task at hand. What it means to be a, a soldier, you're ready to fight. Lives are at stake right now. In fact, right now, many, many lives are at stake. And God said, this is the moment to rise up and take on the role of a soldier that I've called you to be. And we must right now think and act as a soldier of Jesus Christ. We must be willing to embrace certain form of discipline in our daily regime and lifestyle right now because we are at war. We are at war right now for souls. People of God, right now, stand up and be counted. I will continue this again in the next session of what it means to, to be a soldier for Jesus Christ for such a time as this. But right now, I want to ask of you in a moment's time to pray with me to, to, to be awakened from a, any state of stupor and comatose even for some, you know, and, and, or, or just wishful thinking. It, it worries me when I still hear preaching from some preachers, you know, like, like oh, it's just like sugar-coated candy kind of a messages. Oh, we're going to be blessed. Do not worry. And you'll be protected. Yes, we'll be protected, but not just for our own sake, but for His kingdom's cause. You know, and that element is missing. You know, and, and if you're just, just told that all things will be pretty and well and no, you know, there's no discipline, no, no sobriety involved, no diligence involved, you, you will be so hurt by what is upcoming because, because the Holy Spirit is crying out to the church, is setting off the alarm and saying, come, work with me right now. Work with me right now. And in such fearful times, the world is more open to the gospel than ever before. And God said, capture the moment. Capture the moment. So this is a time that we need soldiers. This is a time we need soldiers. And, and I want to encourage you to rise up. Don't turn back. Don't drop out. And certainly don't chicken out right now. All you soldiers of Christ, I'm calling you right now. You who are raised up by God for such a time as this. Because things are not going to be pretty going forward. In fact, they're going to be pretty intense going forward. But hang in there. God is going to back you up to perform His will. God is about to pour out of His Holy Spirit. It's called the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days. He's going to pour out His Spirit upon His people. He's going to pour out His power upon you to be His ultimate witnesses to the ends of the earth like we've never seen in the history of the church. Amen? Amen. Actually, from a few years ago, already I, feel, I felt the urgency to preach about, about us activating our household as church already. That, that we need to, to have our family altar. We, we need to realize our priesthood, every believer. And, and, and there are a lot of naysayers who, who, who heard what I shared. You know, but today, hey, I want to remind you again. You know, now I'm not apologetic anymore for my prophetic sense. I'm not apologetic anymore. I also have been preaching for since the June of 2018 about coming financial meltdown. You know, I've been preaching about that. And now we're beginning to see that coming to pass. All right. And 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 so I want to tell the people of God right now, if you resonate with this message, please. Heed what I'm saying. Go into the Word more than ever before. Go into the presence more than ever before. And get your download from God. Your instruction and counsel of the Lord. Right now. And He's going to anoint you to triumph in the, in the mother of all battles for souls. Towards the end of this church age. This is what is happening. God is about to use us to reap in the, the, the greatest harvest of souls. In the history of the church of Jesus Christ like we've never seen. I've said this Many times before, 
and it gets more and more relevant as events happen and transcend before us right now. All right, so are you ready? I want you, wherever you are right now, who, who are watching, who are listening right now, all right, to, to enter into prayer with me. Because we're going to pray that we will have ears that would hear, like what Jesus kept saying, for those who have the ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I want to pray with us. I want to join my faith with all of you out there to be to have the ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you or even to your ministry, to your church, to your, to your enterprise, the work you are given by God to steward. We really need to hear Him and we need to be led forth by Him in victory. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we have such a privilege to know you and to be raised up by you for such a time as this. And Father, as your people were crying out to you, Lord, speak to us. Lord, awaken us from our state of, of dullness or hearing, of, of hearing or of a state of spiritual stupor, Lord, that is preventing your people from hearing the voice and the cry of the Spirit in this hour and to rise up to the holy occasion, Lord, to be counter for your kingdom's cause. We, we join our faith together right now to ask of you, Lord, to speak to your people with such force and clarity that we will not miss the agenda of the kingdom in this hour and what God is doing and, and that we might co-labor with you, Lord, to perform your will. Father, awaken the church. Father, awaken us. Lord, prepare each one of us to be usable for such a time as this. Lord, sharpen each one of us to be an instrument of revival in your hands, Lord. Anoint us, Lord, to be able to speak the gospel, preach the good news, and to be able to share in such a way, Lord, that will awaken many hearts, Lord, unto your reality and your love, and will be reconciled with you. Use us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, in the days ahead, Lord, Lord, we ask of you to continue to pour out revelation, revelation and heavenly wisdom and counsel upon your people and let us know what we can do, how we can capture this moment to share Christ more than ever before with the people around us. Right now, Father, cause your church to arise, to arise, to arise with great strength and vigor by the power of the Holy Spirit and to be used of you, to be used of you for such a time as this. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we agree and pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Can I call the musicians here come are we able to do the ironic blessing i really want to do that many people many of you wrote to me and say don't stop doing that sometimes i don't do it and, and, and i get i get message from malaysia from different places and say no 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 we want you to say that blessing over us don't miss that so i want to declare over you the high priestly prayer. I want to declare over you. Actually, this is found in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 or 25. Go, go read it. This is the most powerful prayer in the Bible to me. The only prayer that God gave the exact words and told the, the high priest, I want you to declare this over my people and invoke my name and I will bring it to pass. And maybe another day I'll preach the message again on what's the meaning of this prayer, which is God's total healing and wellness, preservation to come upon His people, spirit, soul, and body. God's total blessing, glory, and fullness of His deity to come upon His people. So with that, I declare over you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you 
the Lord shines face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may he give you his peace. Together in Hebrew. Yevare Adonai Bishmerecha Yae Adonai Panai Elecha Bishmerecha Yisa Adonai Panai Elecha The Lord bless you and keep you. Come on, you're a priest too. Bless your children. The Lord shines face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may he give May he give you shalom. One last time. And may he give you. Touch your spouse, hold your children, bless your loved ones in the family. Shalom. In Jesus' name. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. See you all next week.